Welcome back to the Rolando Estacada channel. My name is Rolando. Uh, mga kababayan ko sa mga Pilipinas, salamat naman na nandito kayo. This is a very special day. I finally received yung mga Batangas blades ko. My balisang from the Philippines which are traditionally made, handcrafted in the capital of the world for traditional Filipino balisong in Batangas. I will be revealing the name of the Panday at the end of this video. Salamat naman sa mga kababayan ko sa Pilipinas at nanonood kayo. We will make you very proud and very excited uh, with this unboxing. I have nine balisong here, all done in the traditional way. 29 centimeters. This is going to be very exciting for all of us. Without further ado, let's go ahead with this unboxing. Talagang excited na ako. All right, here's our unboxing. I'm so excited about this and I just want to let you know that I've been waiting for this for I'd say a few months. Pero talagang, you know, it was really worth it that we waited this long. Anim na ito, mga balisong. There's nine of them here all together. I'm going to be unboxing them and I'm going to tell you right now that these amazing pieces of art are made by none other than one of the best. At saka nasabi rin nila sa YouTube, there were a couple of YouTube influencers na nagsabi na this maker is in fact the best. All due respect to um, every panday in Batangas but uh, he is, this person is considered one of the best at least right now. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to be opening the, these amazing works, yung tal, mga Batangas blades na nakuha ko. So the name of the maker, without further ado, is Sir, none other than Sir Louis Almazan. Louis Almazan, uh, he has been making headway, not just Pilipinas, eh, talagang magandang reputation niya eh, but not just in the Philippines, but also United States. Marami din mga, you know, mga flippers dito, yung mga American flippers, even they've started kind of um, getting into the traditional Bali song. And I think just honoring the roots of it is uh, an amazing thing for American flippers. So, talagang excited na ako na ako rin, nakakuha na rin ako ng mga Batangas blades na collection ko rin. So, one thing I want everybody to know is that the traditional Balisong blade is actually bigger than what we see normally here in the United States. In the United States, what you're seeing here, this is a standard um, overall length for a balisong in the United States. This is a Benchmade 85, the blade is about 4.4, so this is a little under 11 inches, maybe about 28, 27 and a half centimeters. But Bente Nueve 29 is referenced to the 29 centimeter blade. So these are gonna be big blades, so roughly about five, maybe even five and a half inch blades. So I'm gonna be using my Benchmade 85 to open these, so I'm so excited. I really hope na excited rin kayo that this is a very momentous time for me. I have never owned traditional balisong blades, so this is going to be very, very exciting. Very well wrapped. And I'll say this, this is very important to me in any transaction, whether I'm booking a hotel or, you know, buying a nice watch or just, you know, maybe even joining a gym, right? Customer service, communication is everything. And as many of you know, uh, din ako ng mga, you know, not just balisong blades, it's all kinds of blades. I also order swords. And the idea is that if your communication is good, responsive ka, mabilis ang communication mo, you know, you know how to get to your customers. That's something that is some I really highly uh, respect and value and that's something Mr. Louis Amazon has been tremendous in his communication. So this is the first one. Oh my god, this is so exciting. So well wrapped. This is the oh my lord. Oh wow. I should have worn gloves for this. I'm gonna wipe it down, but holy smokes. So I asked uh, okay, Louis, that all of it is made in brass because in the Philippines, merong anian eh, merong anting anting ang brass. So this is brass, and anting anting means that it has like good luck, but it has it's a little more than that. I'll explain it in a uh, separate episode. But brass is done traditionally. Look at that. Now I'm gonna hold this together side by side. You can see how much bigger that is, and this material here is horse bone. 
Look at the detail. Oh, Lord. Do you see that? Look at the detail on that. So now I'm going to open it. And I'm going to say that madikit ito. Madikit means it's going to be a little sticky because in the Philippines, we don't have the traditional bushings or washers. We have these traditional pins here that hold it together. So they open with use. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at this amazing detail. This is a carbon blade, by the way. So I asked for carbon which means they're going to require quite a bit of maintenance, but I love it because that's part of the tradition. Look at these amazing details here with the jimping. This is all handcrafted. And of course, my favorite buoy profile. And I'm telling you, this feels absolutely amazing and comfortable in the hand. A little detail on this design that I asked for. This is slim type. This is the slim type. So this is going to be slimmer than the other balisong that I have here. And uh, it's one type of uh, balisong where the handle is a little slimmer. And of course, it's done that way para, you know, yung hindi naman masyadong uh, mabigat sa, sa bulsa. It's not so heavy or so big or obtrusive in the pocket. But just the feel of this is totally amazing in the hand. This is amazing. This one is horse bone slim tight. 29 cm that is amazing ito na nga dami ko nakuha eh i was able to get out na sabay to ay ito nga no ayan sakto nga when i first got these i asked uh, my dad if he can hold them for me so i sent it to Connecticut and i'm very glad that uh, hindi niyan binuksan, that he, he didn't open it for himself. Uh, I told him that I need this for an unboxing, so please do not open. Uh, I will go ahead and take care of it because I need it for my unboxing episode. So, But he's very excited. So next time I see him, he will uh, get to see them for himself because he likes Balisong also. What Filipino doesn't? What is this one? It's, it's like Christmas all over again. Oh, I can feel it by hand. Oh my gosh. Ang ganda. Ang sobrang ganda. Ang ganda naman ito. Ah, Louie, ang ganda talaga. This is the usa. Usa in the Philippines means deer. So this is deer handle. And this is the tradition. Look at the thickness of that. Wow. And it feels so substantial. So... Mind you, sa, sa Pilipinas, hindi lang namin ginagamit na pang panaksak ito eh. So it's not just, in the, in the Philippines, the, the balisong was also known as a self-defense tool, as a personal combat tool. But one of the things that makes balisong so attractive to me, as far as, uh, as a, being a Filipino martial artist, is that this also serves as dulo dulo meaning it's a palm stick in fact there's a video of guru danny nasanto uh in one of his earlier videos talking about balisong and he said that one of the things that he liked about it is that it's it's a personal combat tool without it has a non-lethal option but this like how substantial it feels this is not slim type you can just feel it in your hand it just it feels so good so good so substantial so the practice, the traditional practice of the Filipino martial arts using this, yung parang punyo, yung pangganon, or even better, pangganon din. Oh my God. And this feels so amazing. The smoothness of the brass here. And then you have the usa over here. It's this beautiful texture. The difference is amazing. And again, this beautiful detailing here that he did. Can you see that? Ang ganda naman ito talaga. Ito, bubuksan ko na. Wow. Napaka-smooth naman. Akala ko talagang didikit eh. Hindi naman eh. Oh, nako. Look at this. Oh, wow. Ito, this is a different profile. The one I had before is buoy. I love the buoy profile. For those of you who have been following my channel, I did a full episode just on the buoy. But this one is tare. T-A-R-E. So, it's a little more traditional. Not it's It doesn't have a drop point. But this one is a little more traditional and it emphasizes the width of the blade. So it's a little different, 
but it's just as gorgeous. My God, look at this. Look at just how gorgeous this is. And I'm telling you, it feels very different in the hand than let's say, you know, titanium uh, handle. There's a substantialness to it. So, kung nagpa-practice ka ng arnis eskrima ganun, it informs your martial art a little differently because there's a substantialness to it. This is not for flipping. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung, yung ano, hindi ka lang nagbubukas-bukas ng ganun eh. That's a very different hobby and a very different sport. I call it a sport. That's a very different sport. Meaning, it's a diff- it measures a different skill. But from what I understand, Nung kinakausap ko yung tatay ko, hindi na man kami nag-flip ng ganun eh. You know? So, flipping is not a thing in the Philippines because in the Philippines, uh, the balisong is still considered in many ways a tool. There's like a utilitarian use for it. But also part of the Filipino martial arts. In fact, uh, Pikiti Tirsha has their own uh, curriculum for... Uh, Bali song and you should take a look at their YouTube videos that traditional old school openings for deployment and I have my own episode on that what the traditional deployment methods are in the Philippines it's not for opening I have a lot of respect for flippers here in the United States because they're really growing the Bali song in a way that's super positive but if you're looking at the traditional it's very different And this is not for flipping. This is for the martial art and the utilitarian tool along with the tradition and heritage. Oh my God, which one is this one? Oh, sorry. I couldn't contain my excitement there. This is the Aguila. This is the Philippine Eagle. I love this one. Look at this. And I love if I put my thumb here. Naku, napaka smooth naman. Napaka ano. It, hindi ko I, I was so worried that there would be sharpness here, but it's not. And it, it's something that my dad was talking about. Sabi niya, meron bang guard yung mga balisong na mga bago? Meaning that if the new balisongs have guard, I, I don't think so. But when I saw the Aguila, wow, that's amazing. That is beautiful. And this is Carabao horn. Now in the Philippines, again, every part of this is design and the materials used is very intentional they have a lot of cultural and superstitious uh, meaning mythological meaning to the filipinos this one has a lot to do with protection this one in fact it's all protection so the bali song has a lot of cultural meaning they they bring good luck too so i'm gonna open this this one's a little stickier madikit which is good which means it's so brand new it's tight I'm not gonna flip this. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. This is just, ah. Oh. Sorry for all the noises, but that's what happens when you're Filipino and you get a new Bali song, you get excited. Look at this, wow. Again, buoy profile. Look at that handmade jimping over there. Look at that beautiful design. You can still see the oil on it, really well maintained. Again, this is all carbon. I think it's 1060, I believe, uh, or it could be 1095. Not sure, world of difference there. But I'm definitely going to um, ask about that. But it's true carbon blade. And in the Philippines, we value the carbon blade, which means that it will require more care, more maintenance. And there were some interesting uh, maintenance tips that my dad was talking to me about uh, in the Philippines. And one of those important maintenance tips is that in the Philippines, Uh, back in his day, uh, the, the Balisong owners actually used, of all things, ready for this? They used pomade, like old school pomade to keep their blades not just uh, well maintained, but also smelling good, which is not a bad idea. I didn't think of it, but he said that he had a friend who had a Balisong collection in the Philippines And one time he was complaining to him, he said, Oh my God, I'm... Nawawala na ako ng pamade. Puro nilalagay ko sa balusong ko eh. Which means he was using up all of his pomade, not even for his hair, but it was for the care of his balisong. But, you know, my dad was like, Well, why don't you just get oil? Just like put a traditional oil on it. And he was all like, Eh, mas mabango ang nilalagyan ko eh. Which means the, the pomade makes the balisong smell better. Isn't that amazing? How, you know, the regard for the Bali song that 
you know, it, they want to look good, smell good. You know, it's a point of um, pride and heritage. So the balisong uh, means a lot to the Filipinos. So, so it's not just a tool. It's not just a knife. It, it represents a lot, like, you know, care, dignity, personal grooming. It's part of like a, a gentleman's uh, rig. But in a more gentlemanly kind of smooth way. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I keep getting these beautiful things. So this, I asked for this. The whole thing is brass. And um, Louis, I, you've really outdone yourself. They, they have all of this, but this is all brass. And I asked him to make this for me because it's very reminiscent of uh, the Les Diaz's Benchmade 42, which became the uh, model for Balisong for the entire world. You think Balisong, this is the model you think of, but the fact that it's brass and just super, and again, my favorite, the buoy profile. Wow, just wow. And you can just feel how substantial it is. And these here, they have, um, they give you like different grips. That's amazing. And they all feel amazing in the hand. And no, I'm not gonna be, well, does it open? Yeah, I can feel it, that's, that's gonna drop. So it looks like he already oiled it quite a bit. I don't wanna open it right now because if there's no real room for it. But holy, holy smokes. There's a little bit of stuff here, but that stuff came right off. Wow. There's more, there's more. I hope you're all just as excited as I am because the fact that I received so many from Mr. Louis Almazan, who is considered one of the best, if not the best, in Batangas right now. I am really just super geeking out right now. And I'm taking my time in this opening because this is truly momentous for me in my collection because I've never owned, full disclosure, I've never owned Batangas Blade let alone the handcrafted one. He took several months to put these together. So, talagang, tinanong, sabi ko nga, eh, hey, makikita rin ang tatay ko ito. Tsaka talagang, he's so, my dad is so excited that please put extra care and looks like he really went the extra. This is another Aguila. So, I gotta tell you right now, uh, I'm one of those collectors who has to have two or both. One, kasi, Dino doble mo eh. You have to, there's a double art, especially in Filipino martial arts. Yung Sinawali, I did an episode on that. So you always have to double up on your weapons, and two is always better than one. But also, this other mindset that you gotta have a backup, meaning there's one of them that you're really, really gonna use all the time, and one of them you're gonna keep pristine. So I try my best to do, to get two of each, but same beautiful craftsmanship. Look at that eagle, look at this carabao handle here it you think it, it would feel kind of rough it doesn't it feels it's almost like a very smooth like a really nice upscale g10 you know <laughs> like the grippiness of a g10 but almost it's like upscale like if um if your g10 was named alfred or something i don't know i'm, I'm just i'm just trying to express something here i'm not expressing it too well but that one oh my gosh i have two of them the eagles the eagles how many more oh my god i got like five more to go so for anybody who is wondering about you know filipino bali song why aren't they for flippers because you know think about it you know one of the important details of a bali song is the fact that it can be easily concealed and the Philippines is an interesting country in that for the last, you know, 400 years, we went through like three types of colonials. You know, you had, you had the Spaniards who were around for 400 years. So if we were going to fight them in any way, it, concealment was a big thing. And then the Americans, concealment was a big thing. And the Japanese, well, that was open warfare, but concealment was still a thing. So the Bali song represents a big part of not just the heritage, but the fact that the country, which has only been independent for maybe 60 years, you know, has had to kind of grow its own heritage. And this is what it represents. Holy Lord. 
this turned out so well this is the one i was really nervous about because it's like the most basic one this is kamagong kamagong is the densest wood that we have it is considered like it's like the, the very rare wood like super luxury super rare it is so expensive but this is just class look at that and in the philippines if you're an escrimador and you have like a you have a kamagong stick that means you mean business that means you're going to be really because it's so dense and it's it's such a tough wood but it's also beautiful and elegant that oh that is just oh wow wow look at that can you see this can you see these details here how smooth this looks right you have these very nice grind lines are so 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 nice and again this detail that I asked for. Yes, it's sharp. Just gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. You have outdone yourself, Mr. Almazan. But I will say, I will also add that all of this pride in heritage and in craftsmanship of the Filipino Balisong has a lot to do, not just with the intelligence of the design, but it's tied in to our history as a country that has only really experienced in the last 80 years, it's true independence. So in many ways, it's, uh, we are still, we're still in that place where we're trying to uh, understand our culture, trying to process what we've gone through, what we've experienced, and as a result of that, we take a look at these items and we really take care of them. And in many ways, it's similar to how the Japanese uh, take so much pride in the samurai sword, the katana. They take so much care, the pandais there, well, I'm not gonna say pandai, that's not the right word for it, but their sword makers there, uh, their government subsidized, but that, the designs are so tightly controlled and how it's made is so tightly controlled um, because the samurai, they're gone. They don't make samurai swords for anyone for military purposes anymore. It's for art. But what's cool about the Bali song is that this is a living tradition. And this is, wasn't just for like an elite fighting class. Oh, there's another one. See, I, I got, you see, it matches, right? Um, it wasn't for an elite fighting class. This was for everybody. So this is a highly democratized tool, a very highly democratized piece of Filipino heritage. So it's not just beautiful and artful, but it plays very much into our combative history. Jeez, that is amazing. You know what? I'm gonna do this right now. Some of you may be like saying, compare it to the Benchmade 85, open it up. All right, all right, all right. Give me a second, give me a second. I'm about to open. It doesn't even fit in the camera. Look at that, look how big that is. Look how big that is. I'm gonna move these guys over. And I'm gonna make a little bit of room here. So, pardon me, I wasn't planning on this, but I figured you're all going to want to. So this is it, 29 centimeters. And here it comes, you ready? Benchmade 85. Yeah, no, not even close. And this is the standard, this is the standard size. Uh, of a, so when you say Bali song in the Philippines, this is what we think, Bente Nueve. In fact, in the, in the Philippines, uh, we often refer to the Bali song as Bente Nueve. So it's because it's 29 centimeters. I'm going to put this back now. We got two more to go. Two more to go. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. Remember what I said about things being double? They're doubles. These are doubles. So I'm going to start to pair them up really well some of you may be starting to wonder and ask oh my god look how beautiful these are so what are these for is it just part of your collection so this is what i plan to do with the collections okay so some of these in order for me to start like training with them you know in, in to for my personal growth as a martial artist, as a martial arts instructor, so I further understand uh, the Filipino martial arts, you know, in training the Balisong, working with the traditional tool is very important because then I can 
start to understand the techniques as it relates to the original tool, right? So if you're doing, let's say, bow and arrow work, you know, in the Japanese sense or in the European sense, uh, it's one thing to use any sort of modern materials, but the traditional materials informs you a little bit differently because they had to work with less. So me working with the traditional Bali song is in the same spirit. I want to understand the origins of the art, the way our forefathers used it so that it helps me. But also what I plan to do as a result of that is I'm going to pick just one of them. Oh, there he goes again. Oh, that beauty that is like 242s, but it's like, you know, super brass version. Look at that again. Look at that. It just feels so good in the hand. And what I plan to do is I'm only going to take one of these. I'm going to pick which one. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put oil in the pins. So parang lumuluwag yung talagang bumubukas ng konti. So that it's easier to flip and that's going to be my practice one. I have yet to make a decision as to which one that is. But the idea is that the rest of them are going to remain quite pristine. They're going to be untouched. They're going to be just assignments of care for me. Yung talagang inaalagaan ko na lang kasi ayoko naman na, you know, na, na ano sila ng mga kalawang o kung ganun, yung brass. The brass isn't looking so hot. No, this is a, a part of a martial discipline. It's not just about fighting. You got to learn how to care for your tools. You know, you got to maintain it because the idea is that if you care for your tools you care for your art you care for your life so it, you you now you learn the art of living this is the last one oh i'm telling you this horse bone one is just look at this they all just feel so amazing i'm gonna remove the benchmade 85 thank you for the guest appearance but wow, all I have to say is wow, talagang nagagandahan ako talaga sa mga balisong nito. They are true works of art. They are going to help me understand uh, better what we provide um, as Filipinos. Because remember, we're the ones who, there's some people who say, no, it originated from France and Spain. Here's my opinion on it. I don't know of any uh, Bali song that come out of Spain or come out of France, but all the Bali song, at least the origin of it, come from the Philippines. So although there was documentation that it came from Europe, I'm willing to bet that it actually came from the Philippines only because it remains so prevalent there. But as far as I know, I don't think that it's not a very prevalent thing in their supposed origin country of, of either France or Spain. It's in the Philippines. It's prevalent in the Philippines. And this is just my opinion. Where it's prevalent, that's where its origins are. So the fact that these here are just so well made, I'm enjoying them just as uh, for what they are right now. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. But they're going to inform me not just in terms of, you know, who we are as uh, Filipinos, as a country, na talagang we can take true traditional heritage and pride in our traditions in our heritage but it's going to help me you know talagang maru, uh, mapag-aralan ko pa ang Filipino martial arts i've been in the Filipino martial arts oh my god for the last you know 30 some odd years uh, perhaps even more than that but i'm still learning so i'm very humbled na nakuha ko ito okay mr louis amazon and just first glance first handling these are the absolute best. I am so happy that I have these. So if you have any questions, any feedback, please leave them in the comments section. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, once I play around with them a little bit, I'm going to have a, a review and maybe even possibly a bit of a comparison uh, to what we know now uh, as the Bali song with all, with all of its um, modern engineering. Na talagang maganda rin sila eh. Maganda rin ang mga Bali song na ginagawa dito pero ibang iba. They don't have necessarily that tradition, but they have that efficiency and it's important to innovate and uh, to continue to move the art of making Bali song moving forward. 
So doing a comparison is going to be, I think, really cool and informative. So salamat naman mga kababayan ko. And thank you, my Rolando Estacada audience, for sticking around for this amazing unboxing experience. Thank you very much. Stick around. Stay tuned. More episodes on Rolando Estacada.